mind what the family says. I don't know what those people around you say. I don't know what your friends say. But let me tell you what the only person that matters says about you. And do you know what he says? He says, you are perfect. Yeah, bro. You are beautiful. I created you perfect. I created you beautiful. And that's the message that we are coming to share to you. And do you know what it happened? In order to prove this message, he came to die for you. In order to prove this message, he came to die for you. Now the truth about it is that no matter how much I tell you I love you, no matter how much I toast you or I go out with you, I won't be able to die for you if you are not worth it. I won't be able to suffer humiliation for you if you are not worth it. But do you know what happened? Jesus Christ came and he died for you to prove to you that you are worth his love. He died for you to prove to you that you are worth his love. You are worth the love of the greatest person on earth. And that's Jesus Christ. You are worthy of his love. And he died to prove that to you. Now the question is, who do you want to define your life by? Do you want to define your life by what that boyfriend says about you or what that girl says about you? Do you want to define your life by your relationships? Do you want to define your life by those wines and those drinks and those beers? Do you want to define your life by social media? Do you want to define your life by the things that come around your life? Or do you want to define your life by the greatest love ever known? Do you want to define your life by the greatest love ever known? The love that could make God come down to this earth to die for you. Do you want to define your life by the love that made God come to this earth to die for you? That's the real question. When I ask who are you, what do you say? Do you say, well, I'm just someone that was made, you know, to just occupy space, to work from Monday to Friday, anticipating the weekend, anticipating Premier League match, hopefully my team will win, I'll be happy, go back again, and the cycle of life keeps on continuing. And the question is, what is the point of life? What is the point of being here? Why am I here? Why? That's the question we ask ourselves. Why am I here? I've come to bring that answer to you. You can find the answer for yourself. Because someone put you here for a purpose. The only person that can tell me why this banana is here is the person that put it here. Someone could put this banana here because, you know, he just wants to de de decorate here. Or because he wants to eat, the answer can only be given to me by the person who put him here. And the truth about why you are here can only be given to you by the Lord God. Because you have a purpose. You were created to be beautiful. I don't know what those relationships have told you. I don't know what those friends have told you. I don't know those things that tell you about yourself, you know, when you are alone in those corners, when you are depressed. But let me tell you one word, and it is the fact that you are loved by the greatest love ever known. You are cherished by the greatest love ever known. And that is the love of God. Now the question is, do you want to receive this love? That's the big question. Do you want to receive this love? Do you want to accept this love? Sincerely, Jesus is asking you out. Sincerely, Jesus is asking you out. And the question is, would you go out with Jesus? Would you go out with him? Now let me paint a picture of a relationship with Jesus. You're going out with the person 
who painted the rainbows. You're going out with the person who drew the mountains. You're going out with the person who drew the skies, who made the stars, who made the moon, who made the galaxies and the fast world. Now the question is, would you rather like go out with this guy? Or would you go out with that guy who just tells you I love you by text message but doesn't mean it? Would you go out with this guy? Who painted the rainbows and put his left to you by coming down to die for you? Or would you go out with would you rather go out with that your boyfriend who just texts you by text message to tell you I love you but he doesn't prove it? Or he doesn't mean it. Jesus proved his love for you. If you check through historical evidences, it is shown he died the worst kind of death ever known. They stopped him. The pierced nails upon his hands. And all he was doing was just because of you. When he was enduring the cross, the pain, the beating, the stopping, the humiliation, all he had in his heart was you. When he was enduring all those things, all that was in his heart was, I am doing this because I want to win your heart. When he was enduring the stabbings, the beatings by the Romans, all he was doing was saying, I love you. That was all his words. That was all his statements. I love you. Now the question is, who do you prefer? Is it that boyfriend that asks you for sex every weekend? Is it that girlfriend that asks you for sex every weekend? Just so that you can tell the person, well, I love you. Who would you prefer? Is it that guy that just sends you text messages? Or who would you prefer? Would you prefer the love of the person who drew the mountains? Who drew the skies? Who drew the oceans? And who came to the earth to die for you? Now the question is, which love would you rather receive? Which love would you rather hold on to? Which love would you rather cherish? Yes. Is it the love of that boyfriend? Yes. Is it the love of those people? Yes. Is it the bad love of parents who abandon you at the age of 18? Or is it the love of Jesus? And listen to what Jesus said. He said in Romans, he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You cannot run away from my love because I love you from the heavens up to the earth. Listen to what he says. He says, my love for you is so big that the heavens cannot contain it. I don't know how many of you feel sad, alone, under the duvet, and you keep on crying, what is the purpose of life? I don't know how many of you feel that emptiness within you. Feel there is something more you need. I don't know how many of you feel that there is something more you need on the inside. I have come to show you that thing that has been lacking for the past years of your life. I've come to show you what has been lacking in your life. That emptiness cannot be satisfied by beer or by cigarettes. It cannot be satisfied by Premier League matches. It cannot be satisfied by friends. It cannot be satisfied by weekend partying. Because after those parties, you still feel empty. We feel great. You still feel there is an emptiness that is tearing you within. After those things, after those Premier League matches and you get back home, that emptiness still comes before you and tells you, I am still here. After those drinkings and those wines, that 
Everything that is still inside that tells you, I am still here. I have come to prove to you that which was made from everlasting to satisfy that emptiness within you. And it is called love. Love was what was made to satisfy the emptiness within you. Love was what was created to satisfy the emptiness within you. And that love is made manifest in Jesus. And that's why we bring to you the greatest message in the whole of eternity. The greatest message that even the angels are anticipating to listen to. It is the message of love. The message of love. The message that Jesus, who created you, loves you. And he wants to satisfy you. He wants to give you hope. He wants to liberate you. Some things you want to do, but you don't have the power to do them. You want to live a good life. You want to influence your generation. You want to cause changes. You want to help people. But there is no power to do it. That's what Jesus wants to give to you. He wants to enable you to live a satisfied life. A fulfilled life.